Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good, 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 good. Blessed, awesome, wonderful, amazing, refreshing, enlightening, invigorating, oxygen filled, purpose filled, destiny driven, obedience laced morning. <laughs> Good morning to you all. Um, it's been a while since I have been on. And uh, this morning I have an appointment. And um, I just felt like I should come on and say something that um, was just on my mind. And I kind of woke up with... Well... Even before I woke up, I went to bed, my husband and I, just with a, a level of gratefulness, a level of gratefulness and just comfort and encouragement and peace and I'm so glad that I was able to wake up with that today as well. And as I was driving, I just kind of felt like, let me just get on and just, just speak really briefly. And I, it will be brief because I do have an appointment. <laughs> and I even set my watch to remind me how much time I have left, you know. But um, but nevertheless, um. I just wanted to speak a little bit today and um, if you look at the title, it says encampment, um, encampments and fellowship, encampments and fellowship. And when we look at the word encampment, a lot of times, you know, I know for me, one of the first things that comes to my mind is um, Psalm 27 where it talks about a host shall encamp against me. You know, though, though a host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. You know, one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You know, and so with so many of us, so many of us, there are so many things that are going on. There are um, trials, there are temptations, there is so much warfare that has taken place. And for many of us, it really does seem like in, in this juncture of time that it really is one thing after another. You know, <clears throat> a lot of times people will say, you know, oh my goodness, it just seemed like it's just one thing after another, one thing after another. Well, you know, I, just because a lot of people say it doesn't make it any less true. And we are in a time where warfare has intensified. It doesn't matter whether or not it sounds cliche. It really is the truth. And there is um, there's an agenda in the kingdom of darkness. And the devil and his demons and his imps are very, very committed to accomplishing that agenda. And for those of us who are of the kingdom of God, if we are not positioned um, in God in, in, in a constant position <clears throat> of obedience, if, if we are not equipped with the tools that we need in order to win, if we're still wrestling with things that new converts If we're still wrestling with the things that new converts are wrestling with, how, how do we expect to make it? If we can't 
if we can't forgive people, if if we can't sacrifice what we really want to say and hold our tongue, if we won't find ways to consistently put our flesh on the altar, meaning to turn away things and people and places. Um, good morning, Prophet Monique. Um, uh, turn away, you know, places that we have no business going to. I mean, the elementary things. It's no wonder why we don't have the strength to stand. And so th that's why I mentioned the part about encampments, because when we look at that scripture um, in Psalm 27, we think about being attacked. And, you know, when you look at the word encamp, it means like for like an, like an army, you know, to occupy a place. And so a lot of times we feel as though the enemy has truly gotten comfortable when you set up camp you you bring your 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 food you bring your supplies you you have a tent you got somewhere to sleep you know you got your water you know um, because you plan to stay there for some time and so with those feelings of encampment sometime I just kind of wanted to talk about and just ask you who are you fellowshipping with who are you spending time with? Because when we talk about the word fellowship, it has a positive connotation to it. You know, you when you fellowship with someone, and you know, typically it's somebody that you can trust enough to sit down and eat with and um, let your hair down with. Um, um, sometimes people that you trust you know, you, you will fellowship with a lot of times you fellowship with people that you will invite to your home, you know, um, to fellowship with someone is a, a volunteer, you know, a, a volunteered amount of time that you would, um, spend with somebody. If you're going to really fellowship with them, now you can have a meeting with anybody, you know, but to fellowship, that's that's some time I'm going to choose to spend with someone. Um, and typically it's going to, you know, be people that you really want to be around. And so I'm just asking, who are you fellowshipping with? Who do you choose to spend time with? Because one of the things that I, I tell my, my children and especially my, my um, hey, sister Nell, how are you? Um... Um, I tell my, my 12 year old daughter, I tell her, I said, you know, you have to be careful who you are spending time with. Hey, um, sister Danielle, uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Danielle, God bless you. Um, uh, you have to be careful who you spend time with, who you want to be around. I said, because one way or another, there's going to be an impartation. There's going to be an exchange there. And I said, either you're going to be rubbing off on them or they're going to be rubbing off on you. I, it's, it's just what it is. And so who are you felt when, when, when you are faced with feeling like the enemy is encamped about you, who do you fellowship with? And, and the reason why I think that that's important is because those that we fellowship with, because there is that exchange we need to be very selective with the people that we have around us because when I am engaging in spiritual warfare, I need to be able to have people around me that can help build me up. It doesn't matter how strong I already am. It doesn't matter how strong I think I am. Um, and especially it matters if I'm not as strong as I need to be. But I need to know that those who are around me, whether they are intentionally imparting in me or whether they're just speaking and being who they are, that I can, I can be comfortable, I can trust 
what's coming out of them. That I can trust that if there's something coming out of me that should not be, that they can say something to me about that. That they can speak to me about it and that I'll hear it and that I'll listen to what they're saying. That I'll receive what they're saying, even if I don't necessarily like it, even if I'm not really in the mood to hear that. And that I know that they have my best interest at heart, that my my first reaction or my knee-jerk reaction is not to be offended by what they're saying because I mean I don't really know you know what kind of where they kind of coming from with that you know I mean well why they was no I, I don't need that kind of energy around me at a time where I could be slipping I need to know that the people who are around me the people I'm in fellowship with have the ability to hear from God that they truly love me, that they really care about me and that they will give me things that I may not even sometimes recognize that they are imparting it to me until I need it. We look at the life of Jesus and if you look in the gospels, you will see that it is common that while he had, you know, other people around him, he had disciples around him, you will hear Peter, James, and John, Peter, James, and John. And, you know, if you spend any amount of time in church, you know, you may have heard, or, you know, or listening to sermons, you may have come across somebody preaching about Peter, James, and John, about those, those three, um, and him having them close to him and i mean and, and honestly i don't know if he selected them to stay close to him or if it was just who they were that yeah it might have been the 12 and you know other you know disciples following because you know he had the 12 but it doesn't mean that there weren't other people who were following as well you know but the 12 were specifically chosen but it could have been that you know, maybe in times where, you know, they thought it was a little chill time, you know, those three just decided not to chill. Maybe they just decided to stay closer. I'm not really sure about that, but you will hear those three mentioned very often, Um, you know, and especially one of the times that is talked about is when he is in the Garden of Gethsemane and, and they were there and I mean, they weren't much help, <laughs> you know, because, you know, they kept falling asleep. And, you know, after a while, he's like, man, couldn't y'all just pray one hour? Like, man, I'm over here bleeding and sweating and crying out, you know, you know, and after a while, he just tell them, you know, well, y'all just, just, just go, just go to sleep, just go to sleep, you know. But, um, but when we look at Peter, Peter, the name Peter, um, means rock. Some of you, this is not anything, you know, new to you. You know this, you know, but for those who don't know, it means Petros, it means rock, right? But James and John were called the sons of thunder. And now those who know me know that I think in movies, so my mind immediately goes to Thor, you know, uh, you know, he was the little G God of thunder. You know, um, with his hammer and the lightning and all of that. But um, but nevertheless, the rock part, you know, I really, you know, it kind of that's kind of easy to get. It's kind of easy to understand how, you know, you need to have some people around you that can be a rock to you, you know, um, to have that foundation, to have that um, that firmness, you know, that that base. You know, almost, you know, something that you, that's tangible that you can hold on to that's strong. And, you know, a good rock is not easily broken. You know, it's not easily broken, uh, especially if it's like a boulder, you know. And so you you need fellowship with people. You need to have a person, one or two at least, but at least one that's that has that capability of being that rock for you. And, and please understand, you know, I believe in reciprocity. So I'm not stating that, you know, you just need to have all of this in your circle, in your area, and then you not be that to those people. We need to have that mutual relationship. 
And so, um, so that, so that part is, and I can really kind of go down that path and say a lot about, you know, having a, you know, that person that's your rock, you know, you know, in your life. Um, but I kind of just was a little bit more intrigued with James and John being the sons of thunder, being called the sons of thunder. And, and when I looked it up, it stated that they were called that because of their boldness. They were called that because of their boldness. And so, you know, you're looking at Jesus and he's got all these people around him. You know, we, we know Judas was there, you know, there's always, and listen, let me just say, there's always going to be a Judas. There's always going to be a Judas somewhere. There's always going to be somebody who is divinely assigned to you. For, let me, let me put it this way, for the work of the enemy. It's just what it is. There will always be someone who is divinely assigned to you for the work of the enemy. Is that because God doesn't love you? No, absolutely not. Did, did God not love Jesus? I mean, when Jesus went to go get baptized, you know, it was heard. He spoke and he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus hadn't even gone to the cross yet. So it was already evident that God loved him and he was pleased with him. So with Judas being assigned and being one of the 12 being picked, he was there so that prophecy would be fulfilled. And see, for us, we need to stop being so concerned about who the Judases are in our life and be more concerned with, do you have the discernment to see the hand and the works of the enemy? That, that, that's why for me, it's like, I, I really am always annoyed when I, I see and hear people constantly talking about haters. It's just like, my gosh, come on, let's grow up. This is not anything new. This is not anything that God did not prepare us for. God, Jesus said, the world hated me, so it's going to hate you. So, I mean, come on, let's, 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 let's move on, you know, past that. Let's move beyond that. So Judas will always be assigned to you for the work of the enemy. And it is because there's going to be contention. There's going to be strife there. There's going to be wars that we go through, but it's a testing for you. Are you strong enough to combat that? Are you strong enough to put the words that you have read, the word that you hid in your heart that you would not sin against God? Are, are, you, are you going to be capable in that moment to draw on that and to withstand the enemy? To withstand the darts and and not just get all in your emotions and then get on Facebook and 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 now you know you gotta throw put all these throw off posts you know yeah you know people you know don't support you know and you know people coming for me you know what I'm saying you know you 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 need to watch out because I'm you know because I'm this and that and God and all you're really showing is how immature you actually are. When when Jesus was sitting with the disciples at the Last Supper. And he was telling them, you know, one of y'all going to betray me. And Judas leaned over and said, um, um, is it me? And he looked at him and said, you said it. <laughs> that part is always funny to me. So you were talking about a clapback. Like he said, you said it. And then when Satan entered his heart, he looked, he looked at, he looked at Judas and he was like, Judas and said, you know, go ahead and do what you what, what you got to do. Go ahead. And he did. And that's when he went on out and, and made that deal. And, you know, th that 30 pieces of soul, Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver that he was so regretful for in the end that he tried to give it back and they wouldn't even take it back. But nevertheless, because again, we're talking about encampment and um, fellowship briefly before, my, before I have to go in. But it's important to know who 
is around you, when you are in camp with it, and when you feel the enemy, when you feel like the enemy is trying to take up residence around you and against you, it is important for you to know who you have around you, who you are in fellowship with. And so again, James and John were known as the sons of thunder for their boldness. And what's interesting about thunder is thunder always comes after lightning. Light, light travels faster um, than sound. And so when I was looking at, you know, at lightning and how it happens. And so, you know, it's talked to me about, you know, the scientific elements about what causes the lightning and then it, it, it piercing through the clouds and it causes this channel, you know, and then when it closes, it's like, you know, like a little tunnel, but when it closes, that's what causes the sound, you know, within the sound waves of, you know, causes thunder. Now that's just my, you know, quick version of that, you know, you go, you know, I keep saying, you know, Google's anointed if you go to the right site. So, you know, you can go ahead and look that up. But Jesus, the light of the world, the truth is light. And so thunder is a sound. It's a response to light. It's a response to light. And so when it comes to, now, like I said, Peter, James, and John, were the three that were known to always be around Jesus, you know, and, and for, for all intents and purposes, we could stay in constant fellowship with him. So Peter, we said, you know, Petros, the rock, you need, you need that rock. You need to have, you know, that, that person in your circle, you know, that, that, that is that rock, but the thunder, you need to know that you have people that you're in fellowship with who know how to respond to the light. Help me, Jesus. That they know what the right sound is supposed to be because as I was looking at that, there were some things that, you know, we're talking and I didn't go into, into it too much, but depending on the way the lightning is, it will determine what the thunder will sound like. And so when it comes to the fellowship that you have with people, the people who are around you, sometimes that thunder, now let's just go in the natural realm. So sometimes the thunder will be, you know, it'll be like a little boom, you know, and it's like, okay. And sometimes it can sound like a little low, you know, and sometimes that thunder will shake the house. Sometimes, sometimes it'll be that's that'll be the thunder. You know, you know, you might still be doing a couple of things, but when that 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 earth shattering thunder hits, it's like, uh, uh okay, turn the lights off. All right, everybody go sit down somewhere. Hold up, you know. Yeah, there's sometimes in my house where there's thunder, you know, taking place outside, and it's okay. But there's other thunder where it makes me stop and go get my children, especially my baby. Because I don't know how he's going to respond to the sound of that thunder. I don't know. I, and, and especially if they're in their beds, that'll be the thunder that makes me go and check on them. You understand what I'm saying? So what I'm saying to us when it comes to the people that we are in fellowship with, we need to have people and then at times be that person who knows how to respond when the light, when the truth comes. And so what I'm saying to you is that you got to have people around you that know how to speak to you, that know how to speak into you, that know the right levels of intensity and how to approach you. Because there are times when, when I may have um, a, a friend that's going through something and even though I can come with the that earth shattering thunder, it's not the time for that. It's the time for me to listen. It's the time for me to say one or two things because right now that's what they need. And then there are other times I got to lay it down because that's what they need. There are times for me if I'm going through something where the people I'm in fellowship with, they may come. A little bit more gently what the, it doesn't it doesn't make what they're saying any less impactful but their approach may be different 
And there are other times where they got to kind of come and say, hey, listen, uh-uh, Theodicea. No, no, that's not right. Theodicea, nope. You got to get yourself focused. You, you paying too much attention to the wrong thing. You got to get centered. And if I'm a good friend and I know that that's a good friend and I know that they're hearing from God and I know that they're coming with the truth, I got to be able to receive that. It can't be a one-sided thing. So as I'm going to get ready to close again, I, I really just wanted to encourage you all to just take some time and pay attention to who it is that you have around you. Who is your rock? Who are your sons of thunder? What are those stable forces, those stable people in your life who you are in fellowship with, who you can impart to and who can impart to you? Because whether you know it or not, whether you realize it or not, whether you want to admit it or not, you cannot continue to be so close to people that you're not walking in the same direction with. See, Lord have mercy. Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace, but I came to bring a sword. And if you go and you look in there, because I listen, I am a firm believer of researching the word, looking at the word. And so look at it for yourself. And so he said he came to put mother against daughter, father against son, not because he's a, 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 a God or agent of, of division. No, that's not the reason why. But you're going to have to make some decisions. You're going to have to choose when it comes to the people that you are close to. People in your family, people that you love. And it, listen, this is why wisdom and, and the Holy Ghost, Jesus, is so important. Because you have to understand the difference between an assignment, who God is, is having you to go to, who God is calling you to minister to, and when those assignments are up. And just because an assignment is up doesn't mean that the love is gone. But there are some people that I cannot fellowship with. I love them. I really, really love them. And whatever God will call me to do for them, I'm going to do that. Listen carefully to what I said. I did not say I will do anything for them. I didn't say that. <laughs> I said, whatever God will call me to do for them, I will do that. But I cannot fellowship with them. That doesn't mean that if, you know, there's a family gathering that, you know, if I see them, I can't hug them and love them and kiss them. And, hey, you know, whatever, you know, it doesn't mean that we can't, you know, shoot the breeze real quick. But as far as really spending time and letting my hair down and, you know, remember I said at the beginning about, you know, when you fellowship with people, that's a voluntary, typically a voluntary amount of time that you will spend with people. No, I cannot. Blood, that DNA, it does not matter. It does not matter because if we are not walking in the same direction, like I said before, either I'm going to be imparting to you or you're going to be imparting to me. And if I am there to impart to you and you don't want to receive what I'm giving you from God. I'm being very specific. I'm not just saying, I'm not talking about imposing my will on my ideals or what I feel. Now, when it comes to this life that I'm, that I'm living, I am seriously, seriously sold out to Jesus. No, I am not perfect, but I, I promise you I'm striving for it. I don't care that I'm in, a, I'm in this sinful flesh. I don't care that I'm going to fail and make mistakes. It does not stop me for stri from striving for perfection in Christ. Not in my own way, not, not by the world standards, but in Christ. I'm going to keep striving for it. Why? Because if Jesus was made to be our perfect example, I am trying to be like him in every way possible. So, 
if I am connected to people in my family who are not walking in the same way that Christ has mandated that we should walk, then I can't fellowship with you. I can love you. I can love you and I can pray for you sometimes. Yes, I said sometimes I can pray. Why? Because there are some times that God will say, mm -mm, don't pray for them no more. It has happened. There are people right now that I have not been released to, or let me say this. I have, was able to pray for them for a time, but God is not allowing me to waste any time praying for them anymore. Why? Because they're not hearing and they don't want the change. They don't want it. And so God has me now to move on to other things and other people who actually want it. So again, you need to take some time and pay attention to the people around you that you fellowship with. Because there's going to be an exchange. Because when the enemy is trying to set up tents around your life, though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. And let me also say this, because even though Peter, James, and John were around Jesus a lot, you also have to know where to go when there are times where you have to be by yourself you have to know where to go to have that solitude of fellowship. And what I mean by that is where it's you and God. Where it's just you and God. You have to know how to do that. You have to know how to pull away and not feel guilty and not feel like you are... Um, I don't know, changing up on people or, you know, when you just closed off. Because, you know, pe people will accuse you of a lot of things. You know, my thing is this. They can accuse you of it, just don't let it be true. You know? Don't, don't, don't let the negativity be true. Because people are going to talk. I mean, you can't stop people from talking, you know. But Jesus had to retreat at different times in order to talk to God, to, to fast, you know, and so we have to know when those times are, when it's time for us to pull back, when it's time to pull back, when it's time to commune with God, when it's time to listen to godly counsel or to seek out the godly counsel from the people that we are in fellowship with. And when it's time just to talk to him, because I've had times where, and I have some people and it's not a whole lot, but I've got a few. That if I'm going through something, oh, I can call. And there have been times where I've had my phone and just been like, okay, well, let me go to this name. It. And God wouldn't allow me to call none of them. Because he was like, no, I need you to talk to me. I need you to fellowship with me. I need you to sit and spend some time with me. And that is primarily important. And then we need to know who we're in fellowship with. Take advantage, good advantage of that. Reciprocate that. Because when we're dealing with encampments, we need to be able to have that strength, especially when there are times when our emotions will block our vision. I've been so angry sometimes that it's like I could see the steam in front of my eyes. And if I didn't have people, good godly people that I was in fellowship with, I would have really made some mistakes that I, and I would have had to go back and repent and apologize to some people, which the flesh don't want to do. I don't like apologizing. I don't. That's not, that's not the spirit of God in me. That's my flesh that doesn't like apologizing. So because I know that about me, I'm like, okay, 
let me just really just kill this flesh so I can do the right thing the first time. And isn't that the goal? To walk in righteousness? To be like Christ? That's the goal. That's the goal. So I just encourage you again, check your fellowship circle. Check who you're close to. Do you find yourself always just giving a word to somebody or giving advice to somebody, but nobody can give advice to you? Nobody can tell you anything because you just know everything. Every time somebody starts telling you something, you're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, because God already told me that. Yeah, God was already, you know, dealing with me about that. Like, nobody can give you a word. No, nobody can tell you anything. Uh, and let me just say this. There are times when people have said things to me that I know already to be true. But I listen. I listen, especially if they're not saying something that's, you know, heresy or demonic or something like that, you know, but I, I will listen and I will say, you know what, that is true. Amen. You know, or um, I receive that. Especially, I mean, if it's the truth, I mean, why would I not receive the truth? I don't have to say, oh, yeah, I already know that. Oh, you know what? Mm, yep. Yep. That's just confirmation. That's just confirmation. I tell you people like that, they annoy me. They are not, it's like, can you just, you cannot just posture yourself just to receive? I mean, how hard is it to just receive something if it's already confirmation? Did you ever consider that the person who's giving you this information, that they are growing within their ability to hear from God and that it took a lot for them to say what they're saying to you? And that your ability to have a posture of humility and to receive what they're saying, if you agree that it's the truth, that it could help them. Did you ever consider that? But no, yeah, 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 uh huh, uh huh, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. And you're just so ready for them to stop talking so you can continue talking. You need to work on that, whoever that, listen. If that's you, you need to work on that. Be the kind of friend that you need. Not because you're trying to be manipulative and do things for people just so you can get the same thing back, but because that's genuinely who you are. So I do pray that this blessed somebody today, whether you're watching it now or, um, or later on, I do pray that this has been a blessing and that, um, and I pray that we will, we will be able to be led to the right kinds of relationships that we won't go um, clamoring and, and, and be thirsty, chasing after the wrong people, you know, chasing after what we think people have or what they can do or chasing after a gift or, you know, or connections with certain people, you know, no, no, just allow God to help you establish a healthy circle of fellowship amen so um be blessed have a wonderful wonderful day and um until next time all right bye-bye